welcome, welcome back again to the guys. We'll be talking about another black man, black inventor today, so let's jump right into it, because I don't have much daylight, so let's jump right into it. So today we'll be talking about Jan Ertz, Matt Zellinger. And he was born in Suriname in 1853 and then moved to the United States in 1873 and trained as a shoemaker. Now, in 1883, he patented a shoe machine uh, that decreased the price of footwear and increased the availability of them as well. And his machine made shoes more affordable. In his early life, um, you know, he showed a big willingness to work on mechanical things. And his father was a Dutch engineer, um, and his mother was a Afro uh, Surinamese woman uh, and a slave at the time in the South, uh, South American country. Now, of around Suriname. the age of 10, Jan started to work in a machine uh, shops or machine shops that were supervised by his father. And when he turned 19, he left uh, Suriname to see the world as a sailor. And as a sailor, he traveled on the East Indian uh, merchant ships. And the, then uh, after he traveled on those ships, he then settled in Philadelphia um, in America or the USA in 1873. So once in the uh, United States, Jan spent several years learning English. He had a hard time with English, so he was learning English uh, to master it. And as a black man in America, he, his jobs were very limited um, as he struggled to survive in Philadelphia but with this Jan moved to Massachusetts in 1877 and he founded a apprentice position in a factory a, sh a shoe factory and when he started this position he learned uh, how to craft shoes almost entirely by hand and this was called the cord winner uh, technique and the cord winners made molds of uh, customers feet with stone or wood and they were also called lasts. Now the process of shaping and attaching the body of the shoe uh, to its sole is the, this process and this was done entirely by hand uh, with hand lasters, things called hand lasters. And this was considered the most uh, difficult and time consuming stage of the assembly in which uh, created a bottleneck and that created a problem, the bottleneck. So Jan felt that this is, process was way too time consuming and that there should be a better way and there could be a better way to do this. So he began designing a machine uh, that could do the job or could do the job a lot faster with more pace and more haste and more accuracy and after making the experimental uh, uh, you know several mod uh, models experiments uh, of several models he applied to uh, patent one of the machines that he had made calling it the lasting machine and on January of uh, March 20th in 1883 uh, he received his patent number in which this number is 274 204 for his machine and his machine pulled the leather down uh, around the hill uh, you know held the shoe in the air and drove in the nails to which uh, created this the was a very shoe. amazing invention especially at the time that it was produced and 700 pairs of shoes could be produced a day and this was a almost 900 uh, percent increase and was 10 times more the amount uh, that could be made than people making uh, handmade or the shoemen that were making them from hand so with this great new invention, uh, it of course was a media success. And in 1889, the uh, Consolidated Lasting Machine Company was formed to manufacture these devices. Um, but unfortunately, Jan couldn't, uh, you know, thrive in his success because, uh, you know, he was very, very ill and he contracted tuberculosis in 1886 and died on August 24th of 1889 at the age of 37. So after Jan's death, the United uh, Shoe Machinery Company acquired his patent and they Jan's took shoe his machine over. machine increased shoe production uh, tremendously. I mean, by billions of billions of folds, well not necessarily billions, but a lot, a, a lot, a lot, you know, it was revolutionary. And the result was the employment of more unskilled workers, low cost and high quality footwear for people around the world. And this is what his machine created for people around the world and uh, created jobs and also more higher quality shoes at, at a cheaper price. So in 1991, the United States government issued a Black Heritage postage stamp in Jan's uh, honor. And also a quick note, to, I, I don't know if I said it or not, but also a quick note, Jan's first shoemaking machine model was made out of cigar boxes, elastic, and wire. You believe that? Cigar box, boxes, elastic, and wire. So today we learned about another black man that was an inventor. Um, I hope you guys love this story because I love it too. This is a man that came from uh, you know a place with a lot of discrimination and he still made something out of himself. So, as always, we learn about another guy today and another black man at that that was invention. So next time you look at your Jordans, because I know the black people love Jordans or your Nikes or, um, you know, Adidas or New Balances or whatever it is, uh, your, your dress shoes, whatever it is, just understand that this man is the reason that you can have these shoes very quickly and for cheaper. And they're probably actually 
actually, matter of fact, I know they're spending a lot less than what they're selling to you guys, so think smart when you buy shoes. But if it wasn't for this man, then you would never have shoes at a high rate and a high production. So as always, you guys, yo, keep learning, learn about your people around the world, and yo, the sun's about to go down, so I'm out of here. All right, peace, one love. What's up, what's up? Hey! Shalom! What up? Hi! Happy, Happy birthday! birthday.